In today's reading, there is a warning, there is a caution given to those people who are indulging in wicked deeds and things. Before that, we must know, down through the biblical writings, if you could uh, analyze, prophetical writings are always call, call to the people of God to return, to come back to the Lord from their wicked ways. You take from the book of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, prophets like Amos, uh, Jonas, Joel, uh, Micah, Hosea, Zephaniah, Zachariah, all those prophets have been yelling at people not because of their pride, not because of their anger, because they want the people to come back. They were crying aloud, they were crying out, you chosen race, have you forgotten God's love? Have you forgotten God's goodness? Have you forgotten Yahweh's journeying with you, walking with you all through your life from the first generation till now? So every prophet has been really prophetical. Second, a prophet is the one who does not preach rosy things. He does not cook up anything on his own, create stories. A prophet is the one who directly punches the people with the God's word, with the Lord's word. And he is not the one to please people, but to please God. A prophetical teaching is the one that strikes the people with the right thought, with the right wisdom. <clears throat> Prophets are not to please people, please nobles and kings and uh, powerful people. That is why any prophetical teaching will be hard to hear and also to follow. But prophet is that. Prophet is different from a priest. A priest is the one who conducts sacrifices, right? Bringing God with the people through that religious sacrifices. That is why in the Israelite community, we could find priests, high priests and other priests always have been priests of sacrifices, conducting sacrifices, animal sacrifices for atonement of the people's sin as well as making God pleased. But a prophet is not a priest. A prophet is the one who shows the way to the people towards God. A prophet is the one who is strong in his voice. A prophet is a mouthpiece for God mostly, bringing and knowing the will of God the wisdom of God in midst of people. That's why if you uh, have heard the first reading taken from the book of Micah, he says in the chapter 2 verse 1, O oh, to those who devise wickedness and work evil on their beds, except some incidents, some miraculous incidents here and there, most of the prophetical writings are outcry for people to know what they are. You are doing wicked things, you are conspiring, you are plotting, you are misguiding, you are misleading people and you yourself are in utter foolishness. You have gone away from God, you have gone astray from God. So that's why today the uh, prophet says, Woe oh, to those who devise wickedness and work evil on their beds. When the morning dawns, they perform it, because it is in the power of their land, power of their hand. They covet fields and seize them, and houses, and take them away. They oppress a man and his house, a man and his inheritance. Look at this the type of sins 
that Mikha underlines about the people, about the people of the chosen community. Got it now? What are the type of sins? And these type of sins that are mentioned here in the first reading are also of the same in today's society in our midst, in our community, in our country, in our society, everywhere. Plots, conspiring, wicked things, robbing, stealing, cheating, telling lies, plotting all evils against the innocent and the uh, weak and the powerless. So, all these things have been going on from generation to generation, from one era to another, from one century to another century. That is why God inflicts and he wishes to inflict evils upon the people for their correction, for their repentance. Now, <clears throat> because of these sins, what Micah says, Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, against this family I am devising disaster. Time and again, my brothers and sisters, there has been a conflict between God and people. People and God, always a clash. Never been harmonious. Never been in total cordial relationship between God and the chosen race. Because God from his uh, supreme seat watches out the people, but the people are not in accordance with God's mind. So on and on, God brought evils, disaster through nature and through men. So that's why the today's reading is telling us, uh, Behold, against this family I am devising disaster from which you cannot remove your necks and you shall not walk heartily, huh? for it will be a time of disaster. Today if you see Life is becoming a disaster for us. Nothing is planned out. Nothing we can amuse about. Nothing we can entertain about. Entertainments are already a gone thing, passing thing. Plan of celebration is gone away. Plan of joy on the face is also gone away. This is the time that we are facing a disaster in our life. My brothers and sisters, this is the right time. We should know the mind of God. Signs of time. We should comprehend the signs of time. And it goes on like that. Finally, the reading ends. Therefore, you will have none to cast the line by lot in the assembly of the Lord. So summing up, the first reading is... An O is a O to the oppress, oppressing community. It is a curse to the oppressing community, wicked people, bad people. And if you come to the gospel in the same line of thought, we understand how Jesus was also to meet with the oppressing community, the Pharisees, Sadducees. Zealots, all these people who were plotting against Jesus because Jesus was very profitable. He was also kind. He was also gentle. He was very loving and kind and uh, compassionate. And he was very human. At the same time, he was also profitical in his teaching. That's why Pharisees were conspiring against him. Lastly, one uh, word that is to be understood here is prophet Isaiah is quoted here. Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved with whom my soul is well pleased. So it is said, Jesus is the pleasing son to the beloved father. And he was innocent and he would never open his mouth he never protest, never grumble and agitate, and he will be quite cool like a lamb. And uh, so poetically it is put here, 
he will not quarrel or cry aloud now will anyone hear his voice in the streets a bruised reed he will not break and so on and is the one the hope of the gentiles often our behavior could be like that of gentiles because we don't believe god properly we don't live in a way that jesus christ wants us to way to live so let's open up our eyes look at the lord tell him yes lord at this disastrous time i am coming to you forgive my sins forgive my iniquities I do not look back to my old ways. I come back to your new ways. Change my heart, change my mind, change my spirit and change my body as well. Heal me, comfort me and I come back to you Lord because you are the Lord of love and forgiveness and compassion. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ today's gospel tells us that you were so innocent and you were so humble servant in order to bring us closer to your father at the same at the same time we also are in the disastrous time hard time and very challenging time give us wisdom lord give us joy lord give us that uh, lost peace lord so that we know how much you care for us how much you love us do not desert us lord like you brought disasters among the people of the chosen community israel today also we feel the same but we humble ourselves we bow before you we bow before you lord pardon us bring back all those people who have gone away from you and bring back all those people who are sick and dying to your love to your care i make this prayer in the name of jesus christ who lives and reigns forever and ever amen